and tea squad it's me keisha and i'm here with a brand new all tea all shade real housewives of atlanta season 12 episode 21 review happy easter to you all happy resurrection day for those of you who celebrate the day um i hope you had a joyous day you praise god's name you're thankful you had good food you stayed in your house hope you didn't go over Mima house over pop pop house over nana house Old Paw Paw House. Hope you stayed your ass at home so the spread of this coronavirus won't continue to continue to spread on FaceTime, Granny, Skype, or send her a kite, fly a pigeon. But don't be going over your mammy house and them trying to go eat and stuff and keep on spreading this rona, goddammit. I'm trying to pop this pussy for a real nigga this summer. And if you motherfuckers fuck it up for me, I'm just coming and slapping everybody. But I digress. Before we start, I have some more behind the scenes tea for you guys. Um, if you have not watched my behind the scenes tea video from yesterday, it is up. Go watch that after you watch this episode review. But um, so you know how Nene and Portia have been doing the rounds saying they want Phaedra to come back to the show. Well, I peeped game that uh kenya and cynthia are playing the same game along with lanithia so i peeped the earlier this week that kenya did uh, a live stream uh with claudia jordan um for fox soul so here it is this was early this week she did that live and i, I was like okay it didn't really do anything i was like okay neither here nor there but then today i saw that uh, uh cynthia wished claudia happy birthday and put up a whole collage of photos of them together and stuff and she said happy birthday at claudia jordan can't wait to celebrate with you when the quarantine is over at mike hill and i will always enjoy a cocktail in your honor today hope you ha hope you and bay are having a great day enjoy and i was like okay come along to the party ma'am yes let's have one of your enemies back let's have the bitch that read you for filth at that table that legendary read down when claudia read you for fucking filth bring claudia back to the motherfucking show let's start having interviews where we say let's bring claudia back i peep the shenanigans and the foolery coming from ken i mean from kenya and cynthia i see you I see you and I want it to happen. I have gone on record by saying they did not give Claudia Jordan the chance that she deserved. I believe that Nene had um, used her influence at the time to get her off the show because Claudia was a good housewife and she wasn't afraid of nobody. She ran down for filth, baby, and I lived for Claudia. Uh, I wish she would have came back. Bring Claudia back to the fold, ma'am. She got a new nigga. She's, she's, she's really having that spark of a resurges her recently um she's doing this stuff with fox o i think she just started doing a radio station hosting or something like that and she's hosting you know love and hip-hop reunions now i'm really happy for claudia bring her ass back to the show that is what i need to see on my television screen now uh the other behind the scenes scene that i have y'all know how on wendy williams she always does celebrity lookalikes. Well, I have been saying this for weeks now, for months now, that I know somebody that look like Kenya Moore's baby girl of Brooklyn. So here's Brooklyn, if you don't know how Brooklyn looks. This is Brooklyn Daily, cute little girl really cute little girl look at her face really focus in on her face look at brooklyn that is her face look at the face look at the eyes look at the nose look at the, the smile look at everything i have been saying for months now that i know somebody she look exactly like here is her look alike <laughs> my granny polly <laughs> for weeks that Brooklyn Daily and my granny Polly look just alike. Don't they look just alike? I have been saying for weeks now that Brooklyn Bailey got an old lady face. Like she a cute little girl but when she get older I don't know if it's all gonna coagulate to appropriately but look let's go back let's go back let's go back Brooklyn Granny Polly. Look at my Granny Polly. They look just alike. You can't tell me they don't. Celebrity look alike. And then y'all ain't gonna make the unthink it. Every time y'all see Brooklyn Daily, y'all gonna think of my Granny Polly. Love you, Granny Polly. So let's go on to my review. 
<laughs> Let's go on to my review. So on tonight's episode, we see that Eva has moved from her condo to her new home. She's so excited. We talked about that last week. Congratulations. So Candy goes to see Kenya at her home and she tells her how Todd is mad at her for doing too much. You know, she was working on a shy. She had two days off when she came home. She was booked and busy and spent spending time with her man and her child. He was mad about that like anybody would be. And how she cried over it and she starts to cry again and get emotional and Kenya is there for her and, you know, telling her, you know, I'm, you know, it's all right. Like you can't beat yourself up. She says that she's doing it for her family because she supports not just her immediate family, but little cousins and aunts and stuff. And I understand that, uh, Candy has a lot on her back, but you can't take care of everybody and, spite yourself in the process like you have a family that you need to be focused on you can't be taking care of grown able-bodied ass people you know it ain't your job to just be taking care of folks you know and putting all that pressure on yourself people got to get up and get out and get something for their damn self so she says that he's mad about the sex scene too that she had to film for the shy and Kenya was like you know that is a lot for any man to have to deal with um, can you say, you know, I know I'm not the one to give marital advice right now, but you don't want to end up like me. And that's the God's honest truth. And she said in her confessional also that, you know, she wishes that her husband was more like Todd, you know, because who wants to forsake a love that'll last a lifetime just because you want to work a lot. Like you already have the millions, like it's either family or this ambition that you have. So Candy, you know, says, you know, how are you doing? And Kenya says, you know, nothing has really changed between her and Mark. They haven't spoke. And Candy say, have you taken him off block? And Kenya say, no. And she said, well, maybe that's why you haven't spoke. Haven't thought about that. And Kenya say, until he learns how to talk to me, then I'll take him off block. And I don't blame her for that. Cause like, you ain't going to be talking to me on any kind of way, motherfucker. You got me fucked up. So Kenya tells her to surprise Todd at work with his favorite food, which is salad. And Candy say, you know, he's busy going from site to site, but you know, he'll eat it. And she, King was like, as long as he eat two salads. And I was like, Ugh, but okay. Candy was all her for it. She was like, ooh, Kenya. And they, you know, laughed at Kiki. And I must honestly say, judging from when Kenya started the show years before, I never would have envisioned her and Candy become as good Judy's as they are now. And I really actually love their friendship that they have built. I feel like Kenya and Candy can really be true friends to, uh, to to another, you know, because, you know, Candy has been burned by Portia, been burned by Phaedra. I really think Kenya will be that real, true, honest friend with her and vice versa, because, you know, Candy gets Kenya together. She holds her accountable, but she's also there for her. And I really love their friendship. I love the three of them together, her, Cynthia, and, um, Candy. I love their little friendship. So, Cynthia is showing, um, off her dunk, her booty to Mal while we down to the wine bar. Y'all, now I don't know why we investing in this goddamn wine. I don't even fucking drink, but I was like, Cynthia, girl, if you want to pour your money to this, just make sure I got a mouth juice out. That's all I can fuck about. So Mal tells her, and then I was like, why are you showing off your ass? Like, I felt like she was really trying to be funny because y'all know I ain't got no booty. I'm all titties and no ass. And I was just looking at her like, bitch, you really trying to be funny, but that's all right because my booty is on my chest. You see it from the front, not from the back. So, um, Mal tells us that business is slow through the week. And, you know, Cynthia try to tell her, you know, how ways to, you know, increase business because Mal is the manager. But, you know, Mal like to talk back and shit because they family. And I just be looking at her like, you better check that bitch. So, Cynthia tells her that Noelle is in L.A. for her first, first audition for the Salt and Pepper movie. Now, I don't think she made it because I just saw the trailer uh, teaser on Lifetime last night when I watched the Clark Sisters movie, which was excellent, by the way. Did you guys watch it? It was really good. One of the best uh, biopics that Lifetime has ever produced, God damn it. Uh, Queen Latifah, Mary J. Blige, and Missy Elliott did a wonderful job producing that film. The lady that played um, Sister Maddie, uh, I think that was the mama name. I forgot the lady name. Um, the Clark sister's mama, she deserves all the awards, give her all the things come award season. But I digress. Anywho, um, Noelle is out there, you know, trying to audition for the Salt and Pepper movie. The Salt and Pepper movie will be on Lifetime coming up. Lifetime actually got some really good content coming up here um, soon. So she's living with Mike uh, and his daughters. And Mike want to know, like, how she there? And me and Cynthia ain't there. You know, I'm in St. Louis. 
Cynthia in, you know, in Atlanta or whatever. And I was like, well, I ain't got to do that because my, my child in the other room. Like, I ain't sending my child off to be with no man that I ain't even in the same house with. Like, it's just, that's just too much for me. You know, I I said that to y'all when we first broke that news that Noel was staying with Mike. I thought that was a bit much like. How your daughter stand with your nigga and you ain't even stand with your nigga? Like, mm, and I'm just sorry. You you don't know him like that. Like, y'all been together for two years or whatever. I'm just really weird about shit like that because pussy ain't got no face and dick ain't neither. And I know Noelle say she a lesbian, but you just never know what motherfuckers. He could try to touch on your daughter. Hell, she could try to fuck him. It's just too much, Jesus. Uh-uh. I just, uh-uh. Nope, 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 nope. No, ma'am. I just, it's just certain things that should not go down. You shouldn't be in no body house without your mama. Nah, I'm good. And I was surprised that Leon even let that shit go down. But I guess they real trusting. So, um, Mal tells her, you know, she can't be by Coastal when we marry Mike. And I was like, bitch, I'm gonna be there. I'm not staying in St. Louis, goddammit, because I refuse to let another bitch sit on my nigga dick. Now, Cynthia can do what she chooses, but me, I, she, her will be in motherfucking Los Angeles. So, Cynthia doesn't want to give up Blake Bailey because, you know, that's something that she really worked hard for, and I understand it. I get that. I get it. I do, but when you're saying I do, ma'am, you can't be living by coastal. You in one house, your nigga in the other. What's the point of getting married, ma'am? So, uh, Portia and Dennis is talking, and he say it's hard for him to keep on going back and forth to his job from her house because she lives in Duluth and his job is further out, like an hour or so away. This is the same argument they had last summer when on their little spinoff special. She knows it's not working out, but says at some point he'll need to be there every night. Like, he gonna have to figure it out, basically. And he says that he's not bringing all his stuff back there. He don't want her to get mad again and put him out. But I'm like, nigga, you know why she put you out. She put you out because you fucking cheated. It wasn't just because, oh, we had an argument. I got mad and got my fees and put you out. Nigga, you cheated on me while I was pregnant. Goddamn right, I put your big water head ass out. Looking like a whole water bug. Ugh ass so she reminds him of why she put him out and I was like see that goes to show you this nigga ain't learned his lesson he gonna cheat on your dumb ass again which we saw when he was at the Waffle House or wherever the fuck he was at at 5 o'clock in the morning with four bitches so he feels that he's trying to compromise but she doesn't uh, the, the topic of their wedding and the prenup come up and um, the, the, I'm sorry the topic of the wedding that they were supposed to have that didn't happen comes up and she reminds him that him cheating derailed them getting married like the fuck so they start arguing about the wedding and the prenup she gets upset and he says and she, and she says he's being mean and she didn't take all the cookies that she baked and told him he can't have none of the goddamn cookies and I was like he don't need no more goddamn cookies the nigga look like he five months pregnant girl so, Nene plans a romantic night for her and Greg's 23rd anniversary. She got on her little fur lingerie. She throw out the rose petals and the candles and got the bubbly. And it was a cute little setup. I just, however, did not want to see their geriatric asses trying to get it on. So, she says that she and Greg talked about having an open marriage because they weren't sleeping together when he had the colostomy bag and him having radiation. Now, the radiation part, I can understand. The colostomy bag, I really don't. Um, because, you know, I was sick at one point and I had a colostomy bag for six months. Now, them first couple of months, yeah, you ain't doing shit. But after them first, like, three or four months, you can get it back popping again. Now, it's going to be kind of weird. You have to make sure you swing that bag <laughs> the opposite way, goddammit. You probably ain't going to be able to fuck what you on top, but he can hit it from the back. But then this is, mm, well, nah, this ain't a young spring chicken like my nigga was. This is Greg, so him even fucking her dog style probably wasn't an option because he old and rickety and he could barely make it up the steps. So, yeah, no, nah, they couldn't have sex during that whole time. So, um... Uh, I just don't think she even attracted to him in that kind of way. No, anyway, I just don't see them doing it. I just don't. I just, uh, I just don't see it. Don't want to think it either. So, um, Nene also said that her and Greg's marriage is doing better than all the other girls. And I was like, but she was just on, um, uh, Angela Yee's little podcast talking about y'all do have an open marriage and you got a nigga and he got a bitch and you don't want to just, so how's your marriage better than anybody else? Bitch, you on the same playing field. Bye, Felicia. So Todd is giving a tour of a Rue Studios where he wants to have their baby shower, which I think is a dope idea. Ken is in her closet packing up Mark things. Me and Cynthia come over to help her. And she was like, she just don't know what she going to do and this, this, and that. Because Ken say he uh, asked for his things via the nanny child. 
I was like, bitch, you a better dick bitch than me. Because I got the legendary story about how when I was in my relationship, me and my nigga got into it. And I told him to come get his things, not once, not twice, but thrice. And he didn't come and get it. Well, guess who did? Goodwill. <laughs> when that nigga decided to come get his shit out my basement and he went down there and saw that majority of that shit was gone, that nigga was pissed. I was like, nigga, I told you, don't do me. Don't play with the kid because I'm a boy. I was, ooh, I was a mess. Who child. I sure gave that nigga shit to good fucking will. He was pissed, but oh well. So, um, uh, Kenya says that it's up to him to decide if he wants their marriage or not. And me and Cynthia was like, oh, what? Cynthia was like, what do you want? Because, you know, you can't save your marriage by yourself. And Kenya was like, I don't have access to his family. I can't FaceTime his mother with Brooklyn. And me and Cynthia was like, girl, ooh, you a fool. So Cynthia pretends to get ready to cut his clothes. She was like, don't, don't do it, don't do it. I was like, bitch, do it. Do it. So Cynthia say, with everything you told me, I'm like, fuck more. And I was like, bitch, <laughs> I second that motion. So Kenya say, this is not what I thought a marriage would be like. And I was like, marriage, judging by you marrying this nigga, this is what you should have expected. So, you know, Cynthia and I tell her, you know, you are deserving of love and respect. Like, but until Kenya respects herself and fully loves herself and stops searching for her mother and this father that she barely had a relationship with into these niggas, she ain't gonna be right. So me and Cynthia go to see Eva at her new home, which is beautiful. Um, she's neighbors with us. Eva tells us how Kevin McCall, her baby daddy, is trying to change Marley's last name back to his. But you know that nigga's crazy and all got denied in court. Eva asks where we going to live after our marriage. And Cynthia, you know, was like, she don't know. And I was like, oh, she don't know, but I know. So Cynthia tells her about Kenya as Marley nosy, but <laughs> y'all see Marley go behind them. She was drinking her uh, sip and was listening to everything they said. I was like, Marley gonna be a mess. She is so freaking cute to me. Oh my God, the little girl is so pretty to me. So Todd and Candy have a counselor by the name of Michelle from London come over to the house and talk. London bloke, I'm going on holiday, going to the fountain, going on me holiday, going on me french fries, huh? I'm going to the Eiffel Tower, huh? You wanker, you freaking wanker, you. Uh -huh. I'm coming to Paris, bitch, and I'm going to speak all the wee wee on on this. French, not London. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, the Candy tells the therapist Michelle about the new baby and them being so busy. And Ty say, you know, I think we've been so focused on success that we've become great business partners. And I was like, oh, that was a read right there. That was that was some real shit. I did notice how when Candy brought up how many children they had, she said we have three with one on the way. She didn't name. Kayla, but I, at first I was like, but then I was like, they are raising those kids. I think that's why she didn't name Kayla at first. So I gave her a pass with that one. And Ty didn't correct her, so. So, um, Ty say, uh, they don't spend en enough time with each other. They don't enjoy the moment and the fruits of their success. So he brings up what happened when they got into it and everything and Ace getting into bed with them a lot, doing uh, getting into bed with him a lot at like four o'clock in the morning, asking where his mama is. And Candy, you know, starts to cry. And Ty says that she needs to prioritize her life. Candy say, I realize I have issues with trying to find balance. He works a lot too, though. But my thing is, you always saying how you feel guilty as a mother that you're not being there, but you're not doing anything about it to make it better, Candy. Like, you can only cry and make up excuses, but so many times when it starts to feel like a, a, a cop, like you're copping a plea. So uh, she brings up him wanting to control what she does with his daughter, Kayla. Um, so for Kayla's birthday, she intended on giving her a large sum of money, and he told her not to because she wasn't doing what she was supposed to do. And I understood where he was coming from. Like, I'm not going to give her a lot when she's not doing what she needs to do. And she was like, but it's her birthday. And I was like, I, I see what you're saying, but no, ma'am. If anything, how about you can have this money, but you can't have it right now. We're going to put this money up in a savings account for you that you can't touch, that we only have access to until we can trust you to do what you need to do. They could have did it that way. But just giving it to her when she's not doing what she's supposed to do, I 100% understand where Ty was coming from. So they also say their sex life uh, isn't what it used to be. Like they still, is the sex is good when it go down. It's just not as frequent as it was. So, you know, Ty agrees that they're, you know, just really busy. 
And Michelle tells them not to lose sight of each other and to start to build small moments with one another where they like do date nights and just really start focus on each other. And they agree that they're going to do that. But judging by next week's episode, it looks like they're going to be back into it again. Now, I can't wait for next week's episode because I'm going to feel like I'm going to have a lot of shit to say. Next week is the season finale. After that, we're going to have the reunion and I'm ready for it. Um, let's talk down below. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. Uh, yeah, make sure you guys watch my behind the scenes tea video tomorrow. I'll be doing reviews on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta and T.I. and Tiny's Family Hustle. That's the new show added to the docket. So get ready for it. I love you guys. See you on the next video. Bye.